often people uh, don't have a clear understanding of what exactly consensus means. Sometimes people believe it means complete agreement on a topic, that we have to walk out with our heads together and completely agree. Very rarely is that achievable in an organization. People come with their own positions, their own belief system to the table. And so what we, we talk about when we define consensus is that it's a choice that I can live with and support when I leave today, but it's not necessarily the choice that's most preferred by those making the decision. The three-part test that each individual is asked to test themselves with is, can I live effectively with the decision made here today? What does that mean? It means, can I not go home tonight and stay up all night and be worried about the choice made that I said I agreed to in the meeting room? That's not good enough. If you're that concerned about it, we want you to stress your concern here. Get it out on the table so that we can discuss it. The, the second uh, part of the three-part test is, can I refrain from behaving or speaking negatively to others about the decision? It's, it's, it's very important that if you're trying to make a decision and gain support in the organization and you're asking for this input from people, that they're willing to give you full and open and honest input. So what we wouldn't want is for a participant to leave the meeting, nod their head in the meeting room, I agree, yes, it all sounds good, and then they walk out of the meeting room and they go, that was not good, that was BS, whatever they'd say, and that is undermining the entire decision process. We want somebody, if they're going to have those negative sentiments about the decision made, vocalize them here. Let's document them. Let's associate it with that person's name. And let's be full and open about uh, misgivings or concerns about the process we go through. So what we're saying to people is if you're going to participate in this process and we're going to achieve consensus, it means that you need to be able to share concerns and support for the decision in an explicit way with the group and get it out. Finally is can I readily support the decision and devote resources necessary to make the decision successful? Harvard Business Review did a study in 2006 about corporate decision making and one of the, the major hurdles to successful decision making that they found was that people did not feel that when they introduced challenges into the decision making process that those challenges were integrated into the thinking of the decision maker in a formal way. So they felt somewhat neglected in many cases if they challenged the process. So they may have a concern but that concern is not properly documented. So on the back end of that, that person now is going out to uh, fulfill the requirements of a decision made by others that they challenge and never were validated by their consideration not being explicitly integrated into the process, and they don't apply their time to make it succeed. And that causes the decision to ultimately not be implemented successfully or fail. So what we're talking about with uh, the final part of the three-part test is, you're going to be asked to apply your time and possibly your own resources to making this successful. And can you do that as part of consensus? Because if that three-part test is not fulfilled by the different participants, it's important that we document that, make it explicitly understood so that those people, regardless of whether they support the decision or not, feel that their challenges have been considered and integrated into the, the decision-making process. When you have issues, often people will bring up one of two types of issues that can completely derail a meeting. You could bring up a peripheral issue to the meeting objective or many peripheral issues to the meeting objective where we said today was about developing criteria for a decision, but it turns out that everybody's concerned about a political issue going on between the CEO and the CFO. And so instead of talking about the evaluation criteria for the decision, the conversation strays into the, the conflict going on in another part of the organization. And so the, a way to ensure that the group doesn't get too distracted by peripheral issues is to identify that you will have a parking lot available during the decision making process and that you will document the, the issues that come up and we will ask who is going to address those issues as we move it forward. So, if there's an underlying conflict that's uh, prohibiting the organization from succeeding in other ways, let's get that conflict down, document it, address how we're going to deal with that, maybe even assign some participants to help with that process and keep it in a parking lot. 
It's important that you revisit the parking lot at the end of the process. It's not good enough to throw it into a catch sheet that doesn't make those people feel like that whatever issues they brought up have been validated. It's important that you come back to that and ensure that there's responsibility for, uh, for addressing whatever those issues are. Often in an excited group, you may have a lot of people giving a lot of ideas too quickly for anybody to individually process. If a group gets a lot of energy going, whether it's co conflict energy or, or just excitement over new ideas, you've got to make sure that you capture and bound the conversation so that these ideas are not lost. One way to do that is by tracking and prioritizing conversations. So as a facilitator, you want to always be diagnosing how the group is doing in their collaborative process. If you notice that people are starting to share ideas into the group and those ideas are not being acknowledged, and so Sally has an idea. Hey, here's a good idea. And instead of anybody addressing that idea, Mike moves on, I've got another idea. And Bob moves on, he's got another idea. By the time the third idea has come up, Sally's feeling like, what happened to my idea? No one even listened to it. I wasn't acknowledged. And she's no longer paying attention. And the, the next participant isn't paying attention because they've been invalidated. And nobody in the group can keep up because they've just heard three ideas that no, none can be addressed that quickly. As a facilitator, it's important if that level of excitement gets going in the meeting room, you don't want to damper it, but you want to track and prioritize the conversation. You want to say, uh, let's hold on for one second, folks. What I heard, I think I heard, Sally said this, Bob said this, Mike said this. Is that correct, Sally, Bob, and Mike? Okay, so we have these three issues that have come up, and which do we want to deal with first? Should we start with Sally's, or do you want to go back to Bob's or Mike's? So what you're doing by that technique is validating people who are sharing ideas, ensuring that their ideas are not lost in the uh, in the dialogue that occurs, and then refocusing the group on what the, those ideas are and how they relate to the conversation at hand.